agrees that water is one of our most precious resources, and yet just about everyone takes it for granted. Generally, we ignore important steps to protect it, to manage its flow, and more importantly, to tap into its benefits. Nowhere is this more evident than in the management of stormwater runoff. This fresh water is often treated more like a hazard than the benefit it is, or it is simply ignored until it creates big problems that end up costing us a lot of money. We're going to show you ways to manage stormwater runoff that are cost effective and have immediate short and long term benefits on your community. Reduced flooding and erosion, improved water quality, reduced township maintenance costs, and quite often increased property values. Now, do you know what a naturalized basin is? Good question, Deborah. But first, Let's talk about the hydrologic cycle. You see, Deborah, when it rains, raindrops fall to the ground wanting nothing more than to be absorbed into organic plants and soils that make up the natural landscape. These roots and soil particles grab the raindrops, scrub them clean of many pollutants, and send them where they're needed most. Plants, streams, groundwater supplies, and eventually back up to their home in the sky. Without development, Deborah, this happens all the time. But Captain Hydro, there's development everywhere. Good point, Deborah. With urban development, the stormwater runoff has no place to go and rushes over parking lots, roads, and manicured lawns. Moving much too quickly, the raindrops pass the plants and soil without being sucked up. As this water or runoff moves faster and faster, it erodes soil, pulls up shallow roots, and causes flooding in low-lying areas. As you can imagine, Debbie, it's a big mess. So, Captain Hydro, is a naturalized basin a place where you restore the natural landscape and keep stormwater from turning into a problem? You guessed it, Deborah. And the good news is that this kind of best management practice is easy to do and can save tons of money over the long haul. Now, let's go to the experts to find out more. This stormwater basin is a moan basin. And it's not good. It's a meadow with planted grass, so it has high maintenance costs. You have to cut the grass all the time, and when it rains and storms, it holds water and it floods, which creates more problems downstream. Some of the problems that are typically seen with poorly managed stormwater runoff are flooded roads, erosion of soil, heavy erosion of stream banks, residential flooding, and pollution of water supplies. So now it's time for us to see a real naturalized basin. I am here with Jeff Keller, and as you see behind us, we have a naturalized basin, which he helped in the planting design of. We are on the grounds of McNeil Consumer Healthcare. So Jeff, what exactly is a naturalized basin? Um, a naturalized basin typically uses uh, a variety of native plant materials, frequently um, what are described as warm season grasses, to stabilize the basin bottom, uh, provide uh, year-round cover, aesthetic interest, wildlife habitat, and uh, a much lower maintenance cost associated with them. One of the pollutants that would typically be found in uh, runoff from a site like this are the hydrocarbons that come off the uh, parking lots. And in the case of a naturalized basin with all this plant material in the basin, the uh, hydrocarbons get caught on the plants so that there's a lot uh, greater pollution attenuation associated with this type of basin than with a mowed lawn type of basin. Money is always a big concern in matters like this. So I spoke with Chris Gowan, facilities manager for McNeil. So Chris, um, why exactly did you decide to put this basin in and what are the advantages financially for McNeil and for the area? Uh, well, my, my goal was to reduce cost of my landscaping uh, budget inside of McNeil. Uh, our environmental group's uh, goal was to reduce the amount of mowing, insecticides, and herbicides we apply. We currently have 20 acres converted over to naturalized areas, including our basin here. Uh, the savings over the last 10 years, we've saved $100,000, over $100,000. Basically, manicuring this lawn, this part of the property, will cost about, uh, in the area of $100 a week, uh, for mowing, all the mowing, all the applications, and all the herbicides that we do. Uh, as opposed to? As opposed to, this is just two days worth of work, one time a year. So you're talking about in the area of 150 bucks. Total? One more, total. Wow. Yeah. 
So this actually seems like a no-brainer. Is there a downside to creating a basin for new and existing developments, industrial and residential? From an ecological perspective, and given my bias as an ecologist, I'm hard-pressed to come up with a, a negative answer to that. As you can see, anyone can install a naturalized basin, and it's fairly easy.